Hey, everybody. How's it going? Uh, Mike Morello from CBSI here uh, with a very exciting day to interview a guy that I've never gotten a chance to talk to before. Um, I, I am uh, here from Comic Book Invest, and uh, we've sort of teamed up with Comics Core Promotions to bring you Tony Sklepik. Um, and we're going to chat with him in just a, just a second. Uh, Tony, thank you very, very much for spending some time with us today. Really appreciate you um, taking some time out for us. Thanks um, for having me. Absolutely. And I want to get right into the exciting stuff. Um, really, sort of the main reason why we wanted to chat with you is your, your first big comic project has happened. Um, and yeah. it's uh, just released last week, I believe. Um, I think you dropped it on Sunday of last week. And, uh, and then the comic, the comic itself dropped on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, the Wednesday release day, probably. I think the 12th was the actual release for Seven Secrets from Boom Studios. And you have a Comics Core Promotions exclusive cover set, which is very different than what we're used to. It's uh, what what has been called companion covers. And I, I don't want to talk about that too much. I want you to talk about what that means. Um, talk about what companion covers means. Yeah, it's just basically the two covers that join together and make one image. Uh, I had originally drawn it as uh, what we thought was going to be kind of a wraparound, and then we pulled an audible, so it turned into two covers that stick together. So it's it's pretty cool. It's like kind of one of the first ones like that, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is, because like you say, a lot of times when artists do a big piece like that, they'll do it as a wraparound, which is yeah. actually the feel that it kind of has. But of course, unless you have clear backing boards, you can't really display the whole thing or you want to, you want to open it up and maybe put it in a magazine bag and board. And sometimes you can do it that way, but that doesn't give you the same feeling. Um, and in this one also, most of the time when stores do exclusives or when a site does an exclusive, if there's a virgin and a trade dress, the art's usually the same piece of art, just one's yeah. version eyes and one has the trade dress on it. In yeah. this case, we get a set that has two very different pieces of art on it, um, which is really, really a cool way to do it. So it's a it's a better enticement, in, in my opinion, for someone to buy the set rather than just pick their favorite. So uh, so that's really cool. And I think it connects yeah. kind of askew. Is that correct? No, it's just straight together. It it's was straight just, together? Uh, okay. Yeah, it just goes together um, one, one kind of image. But yeah, it was hard was to tell from the image. Of I'm going to... Character, right? Yeah, uh, I want to. I want to entice everybody with this right now. I'm going to put it right up on the screen to show everybody what it looks like. Here are the two covers. Um, you have sort of the the one on the right hand side there, the Seven Secrets, a, sort of this the the trade dress cover. Then you've got the Virgin cover that connects to it on the left there. Um, it just a, creates a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. Um, fantastic stuff, and you can get it at Comics Core Promotions. I'll put the banner up in just a second as well, so you can tell where to head there and. Um, I, I'm. Are there still copies available? I should probably ask that now. I, I I would assume. I don't know. I haven't really heard anything about how many have sold yet or anything like that. But I would hope so. I mean, I don't know if they're all sold out. Then awesome. But <laughs> I don't think that's the case. <laughs> there were. Uh, I think there were a thousand copies of the trade dress and then five hundred copies of the Virgin. If I'm not I mistaken. That's what it was. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not terrible at numbers. That's why I color for a living. So. The, <laughs> the last time I checked, there were still copies available. Um, and so uh, here's the link for that. I'll throw that up on the bottom real fast. So go to comicscorepromotions.com slash exclusive covers and variants, and you can get it there. Um, and, uh, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you see it. If, you, if you're listening to this via audio and you didn't get to see our picture, you'd be really happy when you check this out. And um, So let's talk a little bit about the project itself. How did you get involved in it? How were you asked about it? And then what was the process like? Um, Boom kind of reached out to me just saying that, saying that uh, you know, there was a, a retailer uh, looking to have an exclusive done, which I thought was really awesome. And then uh, they kind of just, you know, threw me a few details about his concept and a, a little bit of details about the comic. It was pretty kind of hush hush at the time. So I didn't get a lot to work with. But, you know, it was here's the good guy. Here's the bad guy kind of kind of idea. And then uh, from there, they had said that he had wanted to do kind of a wraparound with one of them being a virgin. Right. So, um you know, I kind of just uh, came up with like a really rough sketch and they approved it. And then uh, from there, as far as my process goes, I kind of just approach everything a little bit differently, um, depending on on what I'm doing. You know, the the promo art for this uh, by uh, Daniel Dean, Dean I'm going to say his name totally wrong. Dean, Daniel Dean Nicola. <laughs> um, he uh, he's got like kind of like an anime, like it's a really fun style. Right. So I didn't want to go like super duper realistic with it. Um, but I still try to render everything kind of semi-realistic in most of my stuff. So, um, 
I did it all in like a black and gray uh, Copic marker palette. And then from there, I took it to digital and did all the color digitally. So awesome. Yeah, well, That's... it was a lot of fun. <laughs> did you get a chance to see? I mean, when so when you got D Nicolo's work, I think I'm not sure if it's I'm saying it wrong, too, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, did you get any indication from uh, from them? Sort of, I mean, you got an idea of the villain and all that, but did you get to read any of it first or were you just sort of given a, an outline? No, no, just uh, basically just pictures of, of here's what the bad guy is and here's what the good guy is kind of thing. <laughs> and just, and just go for it. it. Pretty, pretty tight lip. They didn't want anything to leak out or anything. So Fair enough. Fair enough. I yeah. haven't gotten a chance to read it yet, but I do have a copy of, I haven't gotten yours yet in the mail. So I have the Dina Colo A cover at the moment. Um, and then it's, the, it's a Tom Taylor story or Tom Taylor writing. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that should be fantastic. Um, done other yeah. great stuff as well. So this is a really yeah. great thing for you to jump on. And this is your first comic cover. Is that correct? Yeah, this is my first published cover. Yeah, this is uh, this is a big opportunity for me. So that's really. Uh, yeah, I definitely couldn't say no. It's it's a it's a fun project, and I was like, yeah, I was more than flattered to take it on. So. Absolutely. That's exciting. I mean, I, I would imagine that you've um, you've liked comics your whole life. You, I mean, you're wearing an X Men shirt. Um, yeah, I've I seen your. Much. It's a huge part of my <laughs> livelihood. I've been a nerd since I was a little kid, you know. Yep. And it's it's nice that in my middle age I kind of get values on as little as cool as it is now. So, uh, yeah, it's cool that I can kind of make my living, you know, doing this kind of stuff and and you know, do something that uh, you know provides me with a livelihood, but I also really really enjoy on a daily basis. So, what was your favorite stuff reading growing up? Spider Man, hundred percent. Always Spider Man. He's my number one. He still is. Like. I mean, I read a, a huge variety of stuff now, but Spider-Man's what got me into it. And like, I never, I kind of skipped over Dr. Seuss and all the little kids stuff. I just started with Spider-Man. So, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did the same kind of thing, of kind of. I didn't read really very much of that either. <laughs> I went right into <laughs> comics as well. And then yeah, when I thought I, I was really sophisticated, when I was like a young teenager, I said, oh, I'll go into all the Vertigo stuff, all the dark stuff from DC. Yeah, that's what I'll I do. Started reading <laughs> And I'll be really smart and sophisticated. Everyone will, yeah. everyone will think I'm amazing. Way yeah. over my head at that point too. I Me too. I didn't get any of it. <laughs> Hellblazer and Sandman and all that stuff. I don't think I understood a single word of it, but I thought I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, so primarily though, this being your first comic project, primarily before this, you've been a tattoo artist. Um, yeah. And for those that want to see his work. I'm going to throw up a couple right now, uh, but please check out his Instagram. There's tons of amazing pictures up there. Here's the Instagram. I'll roll that along the bottom. So go check that out. And then here's a little taste of some of the tattoo work, which is, I mean, this stuff's incredible. I've got some ink, but I've got nothing like this. A little uh, baby Yoda, which really isn't baby Yoda, of course. So the asset, I guess, is what we're calling that. <laughs> and then this really, really gorgeous, which I guess is a fairly recent piece. This Hellboy piece is yep. really unbelievable. Bright, detailed, uh, looks enormous. And uh, just, I mean, that's some of the best work I've, I've ever seen on skin, man. It's really, really amazing. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So maybe you could talk a little bit about the difference then in what it's like to work on skin as opposed to what it's like to work on paper. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it is, it's a, it's a lot different. Um, you know, there's definitely, I can get really deep into the science of it, <laughs> but that's going to be, good, you know, kind of boring for most people. Um, the main difference <laughs> though, I mean, you know, a lot of people don't realize is it's a surgical procedure. It's not just a, you know, magic permanent marker that we pull out of the drawer and away we go. It's, it's, you're getting surgery done on your skin essentially. So, you know, it's, it's one of the only art forms, I think, where you kind of have to know a lot about that into things as well. Uh, you know, the, the surgical side of things, uh, for lack of a better term. And, you know, we take courses on bloodborne pathogens and cross-contamination and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's that. And then it's also kind of like a trade, you know, because there's a, there's a, a certain skill set that comes with tattooing that you just can't find in any other art form. It doesn't matter how good you can draw. As soon as you have a tattooing machine in your hands, it's, it's a complete completely different process right so you know there's there's a lot of little things that you can't really uh you know compromise you have to know you have to be the best at all three you know it's a trade and it's a job and it's an art form and it's you know uh, a medical at the same time so there's a lot to take into consideration there for sure and i imagine some of that's been affected a little bit with the current sort of covid situation i'm sure people are a little terrified to um, to do you know what? I'm, I'm honestly, I'm busy as ever. Like as soon as we came back and announced we came back, I got slammed. Um, really, you know, if, if a studio is doing what they're supposed to be doing in the first place, as far as, 
you know, proper cross-contamination protocol and, uh, you know, just preventative measures in general, it's really not much different now than it was before. The really main difference that I have in my day-to-day is that I'm wearing a mask. Um, otherwise, you know, when I'm tattooing, I'm wearing gloves. I'm, you know, we're doing everything to, to pre- prevent cross-contamination already. You know, kind of one of the, the industry sayings is you got to treat everybody like they're sick. You know, it's, it's everybody that comes through the door, they are potential you know, spreaders of whatever there's hepatitis, there's AIDS, there's all kinds of stuff, right. That we have to take into consideration. So, I mean, really the mask is just kind of the next step. We've definitely done other preventative measures that, that, uh, you know, are just kind of things that we feel responsible. We need to do, you know, we limit the traffic into the studio already as it is. I'm in a private studio, so we don't have walk-in traffic anymore. We never really did, but now we don't really have a waiting room anymore. We don't have a communal area. We just kind of bring people straight into our offices and everything is done straight in the office one-on-one with the tattoo artist and the client has a mask and the tattoo artist has a mask and, you know, everybody washes their hands as soon as they come in and there's COVID waiver forms and all that kind of stuff. So we're taking all the preventative measures we can basically. So, so maybe not all that much different than it was before, but just yeah, maybe just not a little bit more. more. Honestly. Yeah. The masks are uncomfortable, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's surgeons that wear them for 14 hours of surgery, right? So we can't really that's complain true. if we're doing a few hours of tattooing wearing a mask. So that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. And actually yeah. I mean, while we're on that, I guess it's, it's worthy to put this up now. Um, so the site that people could go and make an appointment with you or to get your sort of approval on a piece is hive mind studios, right? Is this yeah, here? Hivemindstudios.ca. I am in Canada. So it's Canadian site. Hive mind studios.ca slash contact Tony. Okay. And if you fill out the handy dandy consultation form that's on there, my lovely assistant will get back to you and she'll let you know, uh, you know, if it's something I can take on or if it's, you know, maybe suitable for somebody else. We're really good at trying to, you know, if it's not something I can do, we'll try to direct you in the, in, you know, the direction of somebody who is capable of doing it. You know, that's, that's one thing is, uh, you know, the guys at my studio and everybody actually, even in my city are, we're not super competitive with each other. We're all pretty friendly. So we want you to get the best tattoo you can. Right. So, I mean, if it's not something I can do, I'm going to tell you who can. Right. That's awesome. Do you ever, yeah. so you're in, I think Alberta, is that right? Yeah. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Okay, cool. Uh, do you ever, do you ever come to the United States to do say like guest artistry in studios have, around here? Yeah, I definitely have before I've been down to, you know, Portland and uh, a couple other cities. Um, obviously right now <laughs> that's not uh, that's not a possibility anytime, right. it doesn't bring anytime in the near future any, either. Uh, I'm definitely not opposed to coming back though. You know, it's something uh, in the near future. I know I am going to come down, uh, you know, to some comic cons and stuff like that uh, for promotional sakes. But uh, I'd love to come down and do some tattooing at some point. I know I have gotten a few invites from uh, from some, you know, different studios down in the States there. So I'll definitely be taking advantage of that as soon as uh, everything's kind of semi back to normal, hopefully. Uh, sooner the better would be great. I did a, uh, yeah. I went to a s- small local show yesterday and it was, it was weird. It was, it was low attendance, but it was sort of cool to get back in the long boxes and sort of see the culture back a little bit. It was nothing big, but um, I know a lot of the big ones are still going to be canceled through the year. Cause that's an awful lot of people in one place. Um, yeah. But, uh, but I would love to, I'd love to see you at a con. I'd love you to give me some ink at some point. Um, that's no for doubt. sure. I definitely need something new and fresh. I, I really just have this guy right here and a couple small ones. Um, but I need some. I need something a little bit more substantial. And it looks like you're the guy to do it. Um, you've uh, you, you mentioned on the site, and actually, I should say, when you're on the Hive Mind Studio site, check out the gallery of of past tattoos by Tony. There are some. Un- I, I showed you my two favorites, but there's some incredible work up there. Check out what what he does and uh, see if he fits with with what you're looking for on yourself, and and uh, see if that's the right that's the right match. Um, but it's worth just looking at it from an artistic standpoint. Um, you've mentioned, uh, on that site that you have some fairly, uh, solid influences, Jim Lee being one of them. Um, I think you mentioned Greg Capullo, um, and then a fantastic poster artist, um, who those of us that are star Wars guys might know Drew Struzan. Yeah. um, Our three that you mentioned, can you talk about your influences and how you incorporate that into your work? Um, well, like definitely probably my biggest influence of all those guys would be Struzan. Cause I've just, you know, as big of a comic buff I am, I've always been a bigger movie buff. I've, I've been a huge movie nerd since I was a little kid. I mean, that's kind of my fondest memories is just watching movies with, with my family, you know? So, yep. uh, you know, in the eighties, growing up in the eighties, Struzan did everything awesome. And it wasn't until I was in my, you know, teenage years that I realized that it's like, that's all done by the same guy. 
Like this guy's insane, you know? So yeah. Uh, yeah. I immediately was like, I'm a fan of this guy before I even knew who he was. Right. But uh, I definitely, you know, a lot of my work in tattooing, I try to emulate Struzan a little bit, not stylistically, but just from some of his, uh, the way he approaches things, you know, if, if mm-hmm. you watch him in some of his, uh, uh, like tutorial videos that he's put out in documentaries, just the way he talks about art and the way he approaches art. I feel like he, he's a lot different than traditional fine artists in that uh, he's not doing anything any one way. You know, he, he tries different new things on, on a lot of different things that he does. And, you know, he kind of breaks down, you know, art school and not, not that art school is a bad thing, but it's like a lot of art schools, they're teaching you one way to do things. And it's, you know, it's, it's not that that's the right way. That's just one guy did that and that's how they cataloged it. And now everybody thinks that's the right way to do art. And that's not necessarily the truth. You know, I mean, art is all subjective and art's about the, the end product, you know? Right. Um, so those are kind of the sensibilities that I try to take into my tattoo career. Um, but I mean, obviously see my artwork as well. I'm not really just trying to emulate any one person or any one thing. I'm doing my own thing. You know, there's, obviously little things you pluck from everybody's techniques and everybody's sure. little tips and you apply them to your own thing. But at the end of the day, I want my art to look like my art. I don't want it to look like Jim Lee. I don't want it to look like Greg Capullo. Those guys are great. You know, I grew up reading their stuff. I love their stuff, but I still want it to look like something that I would do and kind of stand alone, you know? Absolutely. And your, your tattoo art definitely does. I mean, I haven't seen anything like that. I've seen people with similar levels of realist realism and color, but your style is clearly your style. Um, and I think that already translates on this cover. Um, and I was uh, I was sort of stalking you on your IG a little bit because that's that's what my job's supposed to be. So I was looking at your sketch covers too. Um, and I'll I can't believe some of the stuff that's on those sketch covers. Um, I I think that maybe some of those might still be for sale. I don't know if they're all sold out or not. Um, uh, but I'm going to sh- a good go ahead. Still available, yeah. Like if you head on the uh, the Hive Mind Studio website again. Uh, Mm -hmm. there's a little shop link that you can click and I've got a good number of those sketch covers that are still available. So, so there's that in here. I'm going to show you, I'm showing you guys a couple of these. I have my favorites, my, my one particular favorite, but I have to show this. This (laughs) is, this is the amazing sketch cover work that we're talking about here. I'm going to take the hive mind (laughs) thing down just to give, just to give that Darth Maul the the do it deserves. I mean, look at that, everybody. That is unreal work. I, I can't wait to see more stuff from you on comics. I can't wait to see more of these sketch covers. I can't wait to head over. I'm, and you know, I'm not just saying this because I'm doing the interview. I I want that mall. I I don't know if it's still available, but if it's not, I think it might be. I don't know. Ooh, well, I'm gonna have to go over there before someone else snags it because it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's an unbelievable piece. Um, not and, and the Spidey. I love the Spidey. It has sort of that old kind of like uh, Ramita feel to it, but clearly your style added in so much great depth. Uh, that foreshortening must have been uh, near, nearly impossible <laughs> to do. It's some great stuff. Um, but, I mean, and there's there's 20 or 30 of them up there right now that, that look just as good. So so check those sketch covers out as well. Um, and, I mean, you know, I I fancied myself an artist when I was younger <laughs> at some point. Like, and, and I'm not that bad. Like, I, you know, I teach English normally. That's my regular day job. And I'll draw little pictures on the board, and people will know what I'm drawing, essentially. But, man, that's just – that's some next-level stuff right there. And, I mean, I, I rank that up right with, like, the Alex Rosses of the world. The fully painted style like that is – Unbelievable. Well, thanks. You're just, you know, bring me on your, uh, to interview me and flatter me like crazy here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, to be fair, to be fair, I, I, I don't like to really talk to people that I don't, I don't admire their work. And I, I like what you're doing. I also like the fact that you've broken into comics now. Um, and obviously that's, that's sort of the side of things that CBS, CBSI does. Um, but at the same time, you know, I also just love art of all kinds. I do, a. Uh, um, I do a, an article called Cover Tunes, which is about comics that aren't worth anything that have beautiful covers that people just don't appreciate because they don't have any real value on the market. But they're sort of art that people should appreciate. And I'm, I'm no art critic, certainly. But at the same time, I know what I like. I know what I want in my long boxes. Tapes, yeah, for sure. yeah and, and I'll buy those you know, for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars all day long just over at, yeah. some terrible piece of spec that nobody really cares about. So, you know, from that perspective, I like to talk to the people whose work I admire. So I'm not just trying to, to fluff you up here. I'm actually, <laughs> I actually really like it. So it's, well, it's, so. Uh, it's amazing it. stuff. Um, and uh, we're all looking forward to more work from you on other comics. 
Um, but uh, but we're not done here just yet. <laughs> um, I want some few. I want some future. Some future thoughts. What would you love to work on if you could work on anything? What would you love to work on in the future? Either people you'd like to work with, or a character you'd like to work on, or a book you'd like to work on. Uh, well, character. I mean, my answer is always going to be Spider Man because he's just been my homeboy since I was like a baby. You know, like I, my sure. dad was a Spider Man nerd. That's why I'm a Spider Man nerd. You know, he got me started. Pretty much, as, you know, that's how I, how I learned to read, how I learned to draw was just from Spider-Man comics. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously, along with that comes like a huge list of creators that I would love to do anything with. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't even start listing Spider-Man creators because I'd probably just name all of them. Right. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, Todd McFarlane is an Alberta boy, too. And I, I mean, I've been fortunate enough. I met him when I was like a teenager and, you know, he's a cool dude and everything like that. But it'd be really cool to do something, you know, that McFarlane's involved in. That'd be great. Um, you know, other creators that I obviously in my adult life reading comics, I love Mark Miller, anything Mark Miller's written, you know, it'd be insane to work on a Miller book, do a cover, whatever for a Miller book. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, even, you know, like uh, Scott Snyder, I read pretty much everything Scott Snyder puts out. So it'd be cool to be part of something that he worked on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's already cool. Like the Tom Taylor is doing the seven secrets there. Cause you know, I, I love deceased. I thought that was a really clever, you know, spin on like DC zombies and stuff like that. So for him to be coming off of that and then jumping into this and then I get to do a cover on it. That's, that's pretty awesome. It is. Uh, that, that really is. That's, that's one hell of a great start. Uh, and, yeah, it's pretty rad. I'm excited about it for sure. And I know that boom is really supportive of the artists that they sort of bring on board. Um, and I, I would assume that you'll probably do stuff for them in the future. It, that seems to be the way they work things. And that's really great. I, I think they're a fantastic company. They're doing great things. They're really supportive of their artists and their writers. Um, I feel like they don't try to manipulate things too much. They just put out good stuff, good, solid stuff for sure. one after another. Um, and, and I think that you know, I think that we're going to see a lot more from you from them, but but possibly maybe some Spider Man somewhere along the line would be pretty awesome. Um, yeah, we'll see. Boom's got a lot of great titles too. You know, I, I love a lot of the licensed they stuff that they're doing as well, and like the cool yeah. like uh, licensed mashups, like you know, like uh, the Escape from New York meets Big Trouble Little China stuff like that. So yeah, I mean any of that kind of stuff. You know, like I said earlier, I'm a huge movie nerd, so that kind of stuff is right up my alley as well. And a lot of the stuff I do is kind of realism, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, hopefully I get to work with Boom on some of those kind of titles in the future, Planet of the Apes or something like that. That's one of my favorites, Planet of the Apes. Is, as a matter yeah. of fact, I just finished watching all five of the original movies again. Uh, and huge, they're, uh, they're huge Planet better of the every time. So I, I, uh, I definitely would be excited to do a Planet of the Apes uh, comic cover. Absolutely. And your style would fit it perfectly. It kind of go, you, I could see it fitting along those, those old seventies painted covers that they used to do on the magazines. I could see your style fitting that really nicely. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd love uh, to see that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think they have, something like that for sure. they have their finger on the pulse of, I think what our general age group latches onto, especially from film. They, yeah. they just, they pick the right, they pick the right franchises and they go with those and they get us all 100%. really excited about yeah. Yeah, yeah. They definitely know what they're doing. Super excited about for sure. Um, any other future projects that are on tap right now that we should be looking out for? Uh, nothing I think I can talk about right now because nothing okay. is really super pinned down just yet. <laughs> okay. But uh, there's definitely some stuff in the works for sure. Cool. But we'll pay, we'll pay closer attention uh, as we go. There's something, there's, there's obviously something there. You're not going to okay. spill it, but that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I understand how this stuff works. You don't want to, you don't want to damage any, anything. I don't want to jinx it because. Fair enough. Down yet, right? So. Yeah, I understand that for oh, sure. I'm going to put. Got some... Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't me? mean. Perfect. Yep. No, you were lagging there. I got uh, I got some choppiness. I didn't hear the last like 10 seconds of what you said. Oh, okay. But um, I think we're on now. We're good. Yeah, we're good now. I'm going to put back up the, uh, the, the seven secrets covers here, uh, head to comics core, uh, promotions.com to get those. And I'll put the banner back up for those as well. Uh, so you know exactly what the site looks like to go and grab those. Um, make sure. And, uh, if you're interested in some tattoo stuff, make sure you head over to the hive mind studios dot ca slash contact tony to uh, talk about what you might want to do as far as that goes as far as projects go on skin um and then uh here, here's a little teaser again about what that stuff looks like if you're uh, interested in sketch covers or i should say painted covers these aren't sketches at all 
You can also get those there. Um, and then make sure you're also heading over to the Instagram for Tony, which is um, down on the bottom of the screen there. It's at Tony Sklepic Tattoo. And you can uh, you can see all of his beautiful work there as well, from the sketch covers to the covers for Seven Secrets to his tattoo work. It's all there. And um, and that, how do you like working with uh, with social media in general? Is that is that something that, that works for you? You you seem to like it. Uh, Instagram, especially, you know, Instagram is a huge asset for artists because it's so visual, you know, and uh, being a tattoo artist where you're cranking out artwork every day, you know, it's it's the easiest way to share your stuff with the whole world. You know, like before instagram you know as a tattoo artist all you really had was like magazines and right. you know you could send your stuff to a magazine you take your photo you send it to a magazine you might not see it in a magazine if it got published you know it'd be like a year later whereas now you know you take that photo that video whatever it's online you know minutes after you've done it so it's yeah. it's definitely expedites the process of getting your stuff out there in people's eyeballs you know and yeah and to show like art for people to and to show it. process and stuff too which is really great you can show yeah, little steps you can show people breakdown of how you did things or you know it kind of you know i've had a lot of artists over the years message me just saying how they love seeing that that alone you know never mind the end product but just seeing how it breaks down because it kind of gives them some insight into how they yep. can do something similar right and i yep. think that's something about art that's that's really cool is that it's kind of passed down from generation to generation from people to people is that it's like it's a collective of knowledge and you know the more everybody kind of figures out and everybody shares everybody can make cool art you know yeah and that's my favorite part of seeing all that stuff i mean i love the end product too but the process is really intriguing to me i love artists that put that stuff up there and show you know this is this is how i do it it might not be the way you do it but it's the way i do it and this well, is what ends up being you know a lot of the time too that kind of stuff helps people if there are struggling with a certain aspect of it, you know, it might just unlock that, that one thing they needed in their head. Like, Oh, that's how you do that. Or that's how that guy does that. Maybe I'll try that. And, you know, I know for me, that's worked a lot of the time where it's, you know, I'll see how somebody does something and it just all of a sudden something clicks in my head and it's like, Hey, I could apply that to the project I'm working on or this project I've had in my head that I can't quite visualize, you know, it's just something will just click, you know? And that's, I think that's all a lot of, artists are doing is just cataloging all that stuff in their head for later use and it's like you know it's not that you're just stealing what everybody else is doing but it's it's just it's technique and you're just taking all those techniques and combining them and making a new technique you know yeah making them yours which you've clearly yeah, exactly. done do you have do you have sort of like a like a background process when you're getting down to do art like do you have music on do you do you have a movie on in the background what kind of headspace uh, yeah, do you need to get like, in i watch movies a lot of the time most of the time it's a movie but sometimes i'll throw music on depending on what i'm doing um but a lot of the time it's like an older movie that i've seen you know a hundred times i'll throw it on just for the atmosphere kind of thing um, yeah it's funny because i have like an office with a, a stand-up drawing desk and my my tablet and all of my art supplies in there and i'm never in there i'm usually <laughs> I drag it all out and I have it in my living room and I'm in front of the TV drawing. <laughs> so, Fair enough, though. I mean, yeah. however you get your inspiration. I mean, that's the way I would yeah, probably I feel, do it. Too. I feel like that's how I get the best flow. Even at work when I'm tattooing, I have movies playing all day. And, you know, it's, I mean, a lot of it is for the client because it's a nice distraction from the pain. Um, right. You know, especially when you're sitting there for six, seven, eight hours getting tattooed, you know, you need something to focus on rather than just, you know, our breathing patterns. But, uh, you know it, it it for me too it's also good because i can kind of get on a good wavelength with my client where it's like i can tell if they're not paying attention to the movie and they're writhing i mean obviously they're not enjoying the movie you know they need something different but a lot of the time it's like if we put a movie on and it's you know something funny or something they're into and i can get into the work just flows way better you know it just it makes the day a lot more fun and i mean there are days where i'll tattoo for seven eight hours and at the end of the day i'm like i felt like i was there for an hour and a half that's and that's cool like gone you know so it's, well, you, it's, you must love you know, doing it. It definitely helps. The right atmosphere helps for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I yeah, definitely for, do. I mean, it was it was something I kind of, you know, I kind of got uh, got into, you know, really, really young age and just stuck with it. And it's, you know, it's something that uh, I, I fell in love with at a really young age. And I don't think I'll ever I'll ever stop doing, you know, close to 20 years now. Right. If I had done my math right. Uh, yeah, it's going to be it's 18 years as of like right now. So. Yeah, that's a long time. You got you got to love it to do yeah. it that long. That's really awesome. Oh, for sure. It's, you know, it's, I think it's one of the only jobs too that you can do every day and get to make cool art every day, right? It's, uh, you know, I mean, even any other art, there's going to be, you know, commercial artists, comic book artists, whatever. There are going to be days where you're you're drawing art that's 
just to kind of get to the next piece of art. You know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like with tattooing, you don't really have to do that. Once you get to a certain point, you're just doing stuff you enjoy every day, which is great. And it's, you know, it not only that, but there's a social aspect there that you don't get with other art forms as well. So that's, that's definitely, you know, part of the reason why I love what I do. That's, that's awesome. That's true. It's been really great talking to you. It really has. And I really hope I get to meet you in person at some point when all this you nonsense will. settles down, we can, yeah, we can definitely. actually go back to some normal life. Yeah, um, and, I, and I really appreciate your time today. Thanks very much. I'm really looking forward to seeing this cover in person. Uh, I know a lot of other people are too, and I can't wait to see more work from you in the future. We will talk very soon. Again, everybody, Tony Sklepek, uh, check out Seven Secrets, his connecting covers from comicscorepromotions.com um, and, uh, and, and future work and his tattoos and his sketch covers and all that stuff. Thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Here we go.